Right. Uh, oh, the same spoon. Same spoon. Cause that is, is, is the piece you all going? You always use one we, spoon? One spoon we use because of the piece. We can't switch up the spoons at <laughs> all. So, uh, you know, the slide. You slide pepper problem, right? Because <laughs> one spoon going in everything, <laughs> exactly. so you to get so pepper. everything have a little slide pepper in it. Hey everyone, Chef Jason here, company, and this is How To Foodie Nation. We are going to be breaking down the steps on how to make doubles. And of course, we have the pioneers in the game, the professionals, sauce doubles on set with me today. I have Kelly, and she's going to break it down in terms of the method, how to make the barra, the chana, how to fry it, and how to bring it in together. So you know what? Stick with us. It's going to be a fun show. So Kelly, it's a privilege to have you on set. We've been trying to get you guys for a long while. When you no. think of doubles, you think of sauce. Thank you, and thank you for having me here. It's a privilege being here with you. Well, I mean, when you need to get something done properly, we have to bring in professionals, Professionals, right? agreed totally. And of course, the source name is synonymous with doubles throughout Trinidad and Tobago. Yes. And I know even people all over the world speak about you guys when they come to Trinidad. True. So, so it's hard work, but it is worth it. It's worth it. It's so, worth it. So guys, uh, we are going to be breaking down now how to do the barra. How yes. do you... How do you explain barra? What is it about? Well, barra is like a mini fried roti. Like a fried, me. like a fried yeah. roti, fried bread or something like that. Yeah, fried roti, as Trinidadians is call it, a roti, a flattened dough. Yeah. It's just fried. And that is what you use to put the curry chickpeas or the curry channel on top. On top of it, yes. Put it together like a, the Americans will call it a sandwich. A sandwich. Great. So let's get started. So Kelly, what we have here? So we have a um, all-purpose flour, dry mm -hmm. flour. And this is the ingredients that we are going to add to it. Mm -hmm. We add in the sugar. And that is for a little bit of sweetness in the dough? Sweetness in the dough and to activate the yeast. Because we will be putting yeast as well. Oh, okay. So the sugar activates the yeast. We use saffron in it mm -hmm. to give it the color. Right. And obviously salt for taste. So those four spices, imperative in the, the dough? Yes, it is. So you said sugar activates the yeast. Mm -hmm. You get the color from the turmeric or the saffron yes. and the salt for flavor inside For flavor. It. People usually will use baking powder. You could use baking powder, but I prefer not to. Okay. Because it keeps the, the bar fluffy without the baking powder. The baking powder will give it a little weight, heaviness. Really? Yes. Well, so I only fat. use yeast. All right. So you want to mix it up with your hands? Yes. So you just want to get all the ingredients. So, so you mix everything together properly. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. we add water, water. to it. And, to, and, that's to to bring the, it. and that's to bring the dough together. To bring the dough together. We need it together. All right, good. So let's start to add our water. So the idea is that you're going to add a little bit of water at a time, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's the issue with even when making rotis. Like people don't know exactly how much water to add. People no, it don't. So it is something that is you can't hide from. So you definitely it? <laughs> have to just keep gradually adding. So it's a feeling thing. It's a feeling thing. So what you're really trying to feel for then? What kind of texture? Um, as soft as you could get it. Really? As, yeah, as soft, soft as you could get it. You could, if you need it a little stiffer than this, you could leave it to rest. But I usually need it to use one time. So I need it as soft as I could get it. Understood. So that's the feeling I look for. Now, what I'm seeing here, Kelly, is that obviously it's uh, starting to develop a little uh, color from the, 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 the turmeric and the saffron. Mm -hmm. And when you see good barrel, obviously, you know, it's known for that nice yellow, yes. bright color. So yeah. that's the little secret in getting it yellow. It's turmeric. And how long have you been like making doubles, especially like within the family? Um, let me see, 30 years? <laughs> 30 years? 30 years. You want some more water? No, it's good. It's fine? Yeah. So that is what you're looking for, that texture. Right, and you see, you're seeing not too much of dry flour, but you need the dry flour as well, right? So you bring you it need in. it in as much as you could. Seeing the yellow coming in. Yes, I see that. Right, great. Wow. And you pretty much were, was taught how to make doubles by... My grandmother. So explain to us, it's uh, pretty much a family it's business. It's a family business. So us doubles, it's a family business. My grandmother is the, well, the originator of the doubles. Yeah. And then she d she passed it on to her kids. And then her kids, which is uh, my father, passed it on to his kids. So right now is the grandkids, is the ones with the shops all over Trinidad. When you see a sauce, yes, it is original sauce because it is part of the family. Wow. 
Well, that's good. And it's, it's beautiful that you could come on the show and, you know, share that legacy with us. No problem. So Thank I'm, you so very much. So I see you added a little bit of oil on top right. there. Right. So I based it with some oil. Vegetable oil, right? Sorry about that. Yes, mm -hmm. vegetable oil. I based it. The reason you're basting it is for it not to get crisps on top. Not or to get hard on top. It dry out. When dry out. Do you have to cover this or anything? No. You, just you, leave you it can leave it, it like that. You can cover it, but I leave it like that. So pretty much, we could go on straight and fry this now or you have to let it sit? Or? No, we could go straight and fry it now. All right. So here's what we do. We'll get your hands cleaned up, mm -hmm. we'll put it to the side, and let's get started on our channel. So component. we can put it to the side, yes, it rests, but if you, if you leave it to rest, it gets sore Is that what they call soaking? Soaking. So it will raise because the yeast will get to activate more. So it's better. I'm so it is, it's, it's, but the paste we just have to work with, yeah. we, we need to fry one time. One time. One time. You don't stick. We don't stick. <laughs> you don't stick. We don't <laughs> stick. <laughs> which, which you know, though. Which know. you know. Good. Right, let's get you cleaned up. Great. Chana time. Chana time. Let's do it. Show me how it's done. So, we're using a normal boiling pot. Right. We remove the, the lid. The lid. What you we add, have here? This is chana. This is tin chana, meaning it pre cooked. Yeah. But you could usually use, well, normal household will use dry chana. Mm -hmm. You soak it overnight. If you want, you could soak it for about two hours. When it's soaked, you strain it, you wash it, and then you, you can use it. When One, it's soaked, you have to soak it. But you have to boil it. Of mm, course. No. You soak in it. You de dry chana, you soak it and leave it for about two hours. It will swell. The chana itself will swell. That's why you see it look like this. Right. Right? It it, it grows with the water actually. I understand. So you wash it out, you add it to the pot. Great, but this is thin one. As I say, you can use dry one, you have to soak it. Everybody is household up there. Thin chana is very convenient. And if you're trying it for the first time, I suggest so you go. You add in curry to it. Curry powder. Curry powder. And garlic. That is all you're adding, and you put water. Yeah. Ooh. So I or, or, already seeing how it's getting that yellow color. Good. So it's the curry. It's the curry. So this doesn't actually take, you don't need to put like additional turmeric or saffron in it? Or no, nothing additional. If you want, according to some people, they prefer to use the saffron, you could use it. But it's to just get, give it the color. Understood. Naturally, the taste right. is the color. Mostly the green seasoning gives the chana the taste. That really? you all get, yes. Really? Wow. Good. This is interesting for me. I'm learning here, guys, on how, you know, the sauce bosses do it. Okay. <laughs> so you have to stir it up a little bit. You want to do what now? You want to let this Just, cook for a while? So this is going to boil. We leave it to boil for about, let me say, five to ten minutes, according to how the chana is taking the heat. So we feel the chana. If it's soft, then we add the rest of the ingredients, which is the green seasoning, shadabini, and the jira. All right. And great. we add salt to taste. All right, so let's add the salt now. We Sprinkle. add in salt. So sprinkling this in amount salt. of salt, mm -hmm. this amount of chana, we use probably about a teaspoon of salt. Beautiful. But as I say, when it finished boil and you add all the rest of the ingredients, you taste it and you will know if you need more salt or not. So pretty much you're getting it started with a little bit of seasoning. And then at the end, you could always add more. Yeah, add, yeah, whatever you need. I understand. So you need to cover this? And no, it could boil just like that. If you cover it, it is going to flow over. flow over, so we leave it to boil just So like for that. this amount of chana, we're looking at about probably 15 minutes. About 15 minutes, the for the most. And the water will reduce. And the water will simmer and reduce, and then you'll feel your chana to see how soft it is. And according to how soft it is, which we will demonstrate, um, you add the rest of the ingredients. When you add the rest of the ingredients, we leave it to simmer a little more, about two minutes, and that's it. Chana Beautiful. is finished. Beautiful. Kelly has seen that it has reduced significantly. It's almost like most of the water is gone. Exactly. So that's where we get this thick consistency. All right, so with this now, we're going to add the fresh ingredients, which is shadabeni, right. the green. Well, but you need that because that oh, is also obviously. started with the greens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we add the jira. So oh. as the water simmered right. and it gets thick, we add a little more water. So feel free to adjust the water according to the consistency. According to, according to how you like it. Some people like the chana thick, some like it runny. What is the correct so, way? Um, in between, in between, because you don't want it running off your barrel in the, the paper, right? And you don't want it um, too thick, too thick, where you you you're not getting the other sauces, the taste of the other sauces, which is the condiment. So the consistency of the chana and the sauce, <laughs> play on with sauce, <laughs> it's everything, right? <laughs> yes. How you guys came up with that name, like the name sauce? Um. Name? Well, actually, my grandmother sent her sons and them, which is one is my father. To the, where they sell on the junction in Carib Junction, actually, and the pepper sauce was so hot 
that every time the customers see them, uh -huh. they say, look the pepper sauce man and them, look the pepper sauce man and them, and that's how the sauce name stuck on them. You serious? Yes. Wow. And I told them how to do something with basically no, you know, actually. the consistency. So it's the customers actually came up with the name. Nice. So how long will this have to cook again for? So we could leave it for probably about two minutes. You taste it, see if it have enough salt, mm -hmm. and that's it. Chana is finished. Wait now, where is why am I using a wooden spoon? Oh, so this wooden spoon is my spoon I brought because growing up, my grandmother said never to use metal utensils in right. peas really? or beans. Yes. She says it seizes up the beans and it keeps it from boiling and getting soft. So if you want it to boil fast and get softer, use wooden spoons. Another tip of the trade there, you see? I had no idea about that. Great. So you, you, you must retreat your wooden spoons with respect, home, eh? I respect them. <laughs> it's gold, actually. All right. <laughs> so about two to three minutes, and we should be pretty good. Yeah, and it finished. Nice. All right, so I have some hot oil on the stove right now. This needs to be extremely hot. Extremely hot for deep frying, meaning it has to have a lot of oil in the pot Yes. to, to fry the barrel. So like if you're frying bake, yes. fry bake, Something just similar like concept. S similar con concept. Okay, so I could see that my barado has risen. Has risen. And nice you see it in the color. It look real good. It's looking like it's looking like double. It's looking like double. <laughs> so you wanna show me how you just organize this? No problem. Alright, so come on. So the side. we need to get some oil, vegetable oil. Right? You dip in your hands. So this is a hand thing. So no like utensils. Like no, right no utensils. <laughs> Using your hands. And you pull it. You pull in to the size you want the barra, how big you want the barra, mm -hmm. spread out, that's the size. But this is a standard size, we pull. Oh, so you make a little noise mm. out. Yes. So you could fry more than one. You could spread more than one, actually. So when you're doing these things, what time do you get up in the morning to do all this work? I actually start working 4 o'clock in the morning, 4 a.m. 4 a.m.? Every morning. And how much, how much you have to prepare for in a, in, a, in a session? Well, it's thousands of customers we have, so I don't have to explain more. Oh my God. Each customer eater doubles or two, so that is tell you how much we make. I have to say that On doubles, a daily basis. Doubles is definitely a very popular breakfast here in Trinidad and Tobago to all our friends throughout the Caribbean and also in the world. You come to Trinidad and Tobago, you need to come and try Sauce Doubles. It is the number one breakfast food and it's a million dollar industry, trust me. It, it is. Sells. That and roti. Listen, people will say that, oh, you know, Trinidad and Tobago is all about, you know, oil and energy and stuff. Uh -huh. But the food business is definitely a big sector also. And to some degree, I guess we're in oil and energy because we full energy and we're going to fry in oil. Right. So <laughs> you pull out the loads, put some oil on the counter, and you take the first one that you made, and you push and pull. That's it? That's it. So how thin Again, that is? push and pull. So even you get a little holes inside. It doesn't it's matter. Okay. Yeah, it, it doesn't up. matter. But you need to have the oil present for it to be able to, to spread. spread. You don't put too much of oil, otherwise it'll close it back. All right. So when you do this now, how do you pick it up and put it in the oil now? Well, that's the, the, the thing everybody needs to <laughs> learn, actually. I do in this 30 years, so I was I would do it earlier. Easy, right? But um, I, I usually put two at a time. But as you know, starting, yeah. you could try one. I'm so you novice. hold it like this. Throw it in. As soon as you throw it in, you turn it on the other side. But look how quickly that, that fried up. And that's it. That is it? That's it. There's less than eight seconds? Yes, and you put it. The hotter the oil is, the better the barra comes out. So it has to be screeching hot oil. So screeching hot, you will get the brownness in the barra. See how this one come out? Yes. Clear? So you get a little White? bit of a little yeah. color. So hotter the oil, better the barra. And, and that is the secret. And that's it. Wow. Simple. So you know what? I want to try to pull one or two. Right. I, I mean, I'm getting really excited now. <laughs> so, oil. Oil. Massage onto your hand. Mm -hmm. Pull a piece of the loy. Good. A little bit of any cup. Yeah, come yes. on. Yes. Push. Push. Push forward or pull. Push and pull. However you're comfortable doing it. Try to get all the edges flattened out. Like all right, that. good. First attempt, very good. I'm going to see what this is. Oh, take it at the top now. Oh, good. <laughs> You're the doubles man I'm going to the junction. I'm going to the junction. I'm going to make doubles for you. Yes. Great. <laughs> and that's it. And that's it. All right, let me see if we can pick up this one here again. 
So, again, so you tell me you do two at a time, eh? I do two at a time. I'll show you just now. What I mean, I show two, one time. I don't pick up. She's showing one. off now. She's she getting <laughs> saucy on me. She's getting saucy on me. So I want to realize this, it's nice and crispy. Yes. So when you go and you get doubled by your vendor and they have it in the box, it tends to be soft. Because of the heat, it compresses because they pack one on top of each other. So the heat, when they cover it in a cooler, uh -huh. the heat compresses it. So that's how it gets soft. So the best kind of double seed is obviously when you just fry it. Just fry. Some people like it crispy, some people like it soft. And you do it. So I do it smoked. both. I do it both ways. Sure, some more. Yeah. <laughs> this is what we were waiting for Trinidad and Tobago. Sources in the house train us how to make the barra, stretch it and fry it. And she's moving like a well-oiled machine, no pun intended. But she's using oil. Right, so I, I throw two at a time. See? And with that, you turn. Right. And the perfect barra for you is a nice thin barra. A thin barra. Wow, beautiful. You know what, guys? We're going to finish off this. Stick with us. So our channel looking good. Very good. It sits a little bit of time and it gets thick and nice. Mm -hmm. So this is all and about the, tasty. the consist Most important. consistency in the sauce, girl. Yes. Barra looking <laughs> awesome. So let me try this and preside over me. See if I'm doing it right. So, Barra. See if I can hire you. Well, I'm looking for a walk in, <laughs> no, girl. Things rough these days. At least you have something to fall back on. So there's rest one barra on top of each other. One on top of each other. Right. And portion control here. Let me do mm -hmm. it one spoon. More? More. Right. That good? Yes, that good. According right. to how much channel you want. Some people want plenty, some people want slight. Right, so shadow of any sauce? Shot of any sauce. And you don't want to douse it down too much, right? Nope. Slight. Right. Uh, oh, the same spoon. Same spoon. because is, is it the piece you all going? All is we, spoon? One spoon we use because of the piece. We can't switch up the spoons at <laughs> all. So, uh, you know, the slight. It's like pepper problem, right? Good. Because one spoon going in everything, <laughs> exactly. so you get so pepper. everything have a little slight pepper in it. Ooh, coconut chutney? Coconut chutney. And these are all sauces made by you, right? These are all sauces made by sauce doubles. My gosh, you are looking at that better <laughs> So coconut chutney. I mean, it look inside to look good from a gourmet point of view. It's looking beautiful already. Yes. Right, what we have here? That is the pepper sauce. Okay, I'll, go, I'll blank that for now. That look, you see the color of that, people? That's looking deadly. <laughs> and this one is what? And that is roast pepper. So that's the, oh uh, that God. we enhance the bitterness in the pepper. So let me go in with some cucumbers. And a little bit of crunch. Cucumber. Put it on top there. So, you, so you know the story behind the cucumbers, right? No, tell me. So we add cucumbers to doubles to make it a balanced meal. So that's the healthy part of the doubles. <laughs> <laughs> How you think I did? They're very good. It's looking tasty. I want to try it. You have to. You're talking about the speed and pace you just move with one oh. spoon. Show me now. <laughs> let, me see, let, me see, let, me, let me taste this. So go inside here. Oh my lord. Mmm. Mmm. This one. This so this one good. tasting good. So wait now. All these, all these sauces, you know you have to show us how to make these. Of course. If you all want Kelly to come back on the show and show us how to make all these sauces. Please let us know. We do have a recipe for the sweet sauce and the shadow of any sauce ready, tamarind sauce there. Talking about sweet sauce. What's your opinion on this whole thing about people having sweet sauce on the doubles? Some people say, I don't want that. Real doubles don't have sweet sauce. Leave that out. Sweet sauce is, how you, how you Sweet think? sauce is added to the doubles to make the doubles a little sweeter from in my point of view. Some people say they're already sweet, so they don't need sweet sauce. It have nothing to do with the doubles. They're talking about themselves. They're already sweet, so they don't need sweet sauce. But it's mm. sweeter, better for me. And I love travesty <laughs> also. I know everybody asks now, so idea. What's this feeling about shrimp doubles and chicken doubles? And, um, you know, well, I, proteins. I know it have the shrimp doubles and the, the, the duck doubles and all the things, but in our family, the sauce family, we don't, um, we don't associate no fresh in the doubles. The reason being is because our customers, we have from different cultures, which is right. the Hindus, Muslims, and sometimes they do fasting. And we respect that. So at least when they come to sauce doubles, they know it had no fresh at all so, in the doubles. So you guys are purists when it comes to that? Yes, we are. Wonderful. And we stick to that. So, so you see, sauce will never have a shrimp doubles or a chicken doubles and things like that. We don't deal with no fresh at all in the kitchen. Well, you know what? We pretty much have the real deal right now. We have homemade doubles mm -hmm. done by sauce. You want to try, try one with me? No? Oh, Take goodness. a little piece. You know, I know, I know, I know you are not afraid of pepper. <laughs> mm. Mm-hmm. Listen, mm -hmm. people. I invite you guys to try this recipe. Check me down below. 
We got the professionals in the kitchen showing us how to make it. So stubborn, thank you so much for being here. You're it's welcome. not that hard. There's some technicality in it, of course. We sort of debunked that for you in terms of stretching the barrel, how to make the dough, the consistency of the sauce in terms of using dry chana compared to canned chana. And of course, the flavors that really does bring a comprehensive doubles together. Listen, if the chef not make eating her own stuff, something wrong, you know? Exactly. Clearly, she's in a different zone right now. Exactly. <laughs> oh my God, that's how is this? Kelly, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you so very much for having me. And we look forward to probably seeing you again. No problem. All the best success for you guys and Source. Thank you Keep so on very much. Keep representing Trinidad. I will definitely. So, so I have one more question though. Afraid. I'm afraid of what you're going to ask me. When Source went and raised doubles to $6.